they bought the fifteen hundred dollar panel. It's right there. So this one right here has the pulse frequency. It has the cruise control and all that stuff right here. So that's the only difference between that machine and this machine. So when you come up to this machine, you just want to make sure that the pulser is off. And when it's on, use it if this green light's on. No, maybe not. Oh, there it is. That light comes on. So I'll tell you all these are in effect. So turn that off and you won't have to worry about it. So this one's the same thing, right? All the buttons are exactly the same, except they have this panel in there. So any tick you walk up to, you're going to look for is just a little bit older. It's an older version of that one there. Still the same thing. You still have your AC balance. This is your amperage. You have your post flow and then your down slope, right? The down slope we're going to have shut off. This one here, they had to put an external water cooler on it because it didn't have one built in. So this one will be a little bit noisier when you run it. That's the only difference. So you have to listen to that. But otherwise, it's exactly the same. All the same features. Now you guys see those. It's all the same features. This is just a smaller shop machine. Okay, so this would be a little less expensive. Probably getting this probably in the I'm gonna guess the 1800 to 2000 dollars range. What limitations do you have with that smaller machine? Just just the amperage, none. There's no real limitations to this. How many amperage? 225. How do you turn? I mean you want to show us how to turn it on? Oh, right here, same switch. Now all of them will be the same, all the power switch right in front. These would be the only ones that would be weird, and I'll spend a little more time showing you those. So this one, once again, has the, has the outside water cooler, so it's going to be a little bit loud. Then we got these guys here. These have a knob on the back. Yeah, turn on, it's going to go through the thing. They're a little intimidating because of all the lights and stuff. These, you actually have to plug in your water cooler, okay, because it doesn't have a, a switch on the back to plug it into. This machine here is going to be like your one that you selected arc welding or TIG welding, only this one has more functions. This one here you can go up to, it says E6010, which is a Lincoln rod, which is a 6010 rod. It has a circuit in it that's optimized for that to run in that rod better. It's a very um, common rod. They call it the garbage can rod. It's a rod you do any sort of welding on platforms and stuff for you were. Yeah, we use Pipelines, 6010s, like 60 probably. 7018. Yeah. 718 is low hydrogen. Um, 6010 rod we use a lot though on regular mild steel. As long as there's no uh, no variances on the steel, we use that. Any other arc welding rod goes down to that symbol. Something funny about this, I tried it out at Lincoln when I bought it. It had an American version of the panel, which was all words. And then they decided that the, this was a real international market, these welders, so they went to international symbols. Well, I don't know international symbols at all, so. I think the poor Lincoln rep had to come out three times to talk to me and finally get this thing down. And they couldn't put the other panel on it. They didn't have any. They stopped making them. Looks like it's an alien to the writing. Yeah, well, all the symbols mean something. And the only symbol I knew was this one here was a squiggly one. <laughs> and if you remember, that's AC. That's the AC current symbol. I don't remember that from being electric. So regular um, TIG welding, what we're going to do is a third light down. This button over here is another button on those. Remember I told you about cruise control where you step on the pedal and it stays on? That's what that button does. This button, that means local and that means remote on there. Then you come down here and these are all the buttons for the, uh, the pulser and all that. So as long as you don't touch this button and turn that on, none of those really have any effect. Then over here, I'll tell you the post flow, which right now they have set 10 seconds. I'll drop that to eight. So this is set at six amps, so we're probably, like I said, we're probably gonna start somewhere in the 60 range. And the red button turns you, so the only thing you have to do is turn it on, make sure that's right and then make all your adjustments right there. That's it. So it's actually really simple once you figure that out. It's when you start getting into these right here, then you want to start playing with the pulser. It's kind of tricky because you have to know what each one of them mean and it's kind of a pain in the ass. So that's it for these. And like I said, we have to plug these in and that would be that. So why don't we get over here and I'll do some demos for you guys. So everyone grab a hood. <laughs> 